Fisherman Rotha, 97.1, the fan. Bengals quarterback Andy Dalton. I love it, man. I love his take. He says, uh, we're the team to beat in the AFC North. They're ready to take that next step. Uh, no excuses now for the Bengals. We talked about this before the draft, that this was a team in ascent when you looked at uh, maybe Baltimore and Pittsburgh taking a step back. Cleveland not there yet. And, uh, boy, the Bengals in pretty good position and in better position because I think they got a steal in the draft. Reed Fraggle, former Buckeye, joining us now. Uh, Reed, I, let's go back to the draft, my man. I know it probably didn't go in terms of round the way that you wanted, but there are a billion stories when you talk about the NFL draft of guys who fell and end up being in, and making everybody who passed on them pay. Uh, what was your reaction when you finally heard your name called, and what did it mean to you? Hey, Bo, thanks for having me first off. Um, you bet, bud. But, uh, yeah, it was just kind of a surprise, I guess you would say, that day. I, uh, I guess you kind of, uh, kind of had – expectations going into it of going a little bit earlier, but, you know, I, I did have a, a gut feeling about going to Cincinnati heading into the draft. I worked out with uh, Coach Alexander, their offensive line coach, that Monday, so uh, good vibes coming off of that, but uh, the other day, like I said, I plan on going a little bit earlier, but I'm glad to be a Bengal, and I'm looking forward to this opportunity. I'm very excited. Yeah, Reed, congratulations. It's, it's fantastic. When we had you on in the past, and I, I thought that and I'll be honest, I thought that when they brought you in to kind of work you out, I thought, all right, well, they're either going to take you or they're using you as a little bit of leverage for Smith to get him re-signed and that sort of thing. And then, boom, you're kind of waiting for, for that, that call. When you get the call from them, uh, describe what it's like. Oh, I mean, it was kind of all just hit me at once right then. It kind of was a, a surreal moment. I mean, I had my family and my close friends there with me, and we were standing in the black wall watching it. And, um I was texting Coach Alexander, and uh, he was telling me uh, if I was hearing anything. He said, "Keep your head up. We got a couple, we got a pick coming up here pretty soon." And I asked him straight up. I said, "Are you taking me?" And he said, "Can you keep a promise up to say anything?" And I said, "Absolutely." And at that point, he said yes. And um, right after he texted me that, actually, the Panthers called me and started talking free agency. So <laughs> um, Jeff Hireman, my, my uh, good buddy and teammate, came out in the hallway where I was, and he said, "Bengals are up next. You got to come in here." <laughs> And I uh, actually had a hang up a call to the Panthers to take uh, Marvin Lewis's call and um, tell me that I was being selected. So it was a, it was a surreal moment and it's something I'll never forget. That's awesome. Gosh, talking to Reed Fraggle, that's thanks for sharing that, buddy. That's like incredible. I got a call, right, I got a call by the way. I got, I got them, I got Marvin's on the other line. Can you hold on him? <laughs> that's great. Hey, man, I got to tell you a story. A couple years ago, I'm at Illinois, um, and Jim Lachey and I are doing the Urban Meyer Show pregame, and we're sitting there in a commercial break. And Lachey says to me, you want to know who the best offensive lineman is on this team? And I said, who? And he goes, he's playing tight end. And he goes, it's Reed Fragle. When th – this was obviously – when did you – and, it, I mean, this is a, obviously, you know, Jim Lachey's a guy who knows a little bit about offensive line. When did this become something that you wanted to do? When was the first time you were approached about it? And, obviously, it's paid huge dividends. When did you think that it could have this type of upside for you? Uh, well, Kirk Barton, uh, who's a great mentor of mine, and uh, he did a great job coaching me as a GA this past year. He uh, he kind of been talking to me about it, I guess, the year before, um, which would be my junior year. And um, he was talking about the idea at the time and uh, kind of about the future of things as the season progressed. And, you know, once Coach Meyer was hired and his staff came in, I knew uh, I wasn't going to be a spread tight end. And uh, obviously losing Mike Adams and J.B. Shugart, the idea became more and more realistic. And uh, sure enough, when Coach uh, Meyer then came in, I, so I, I approached Coach Meyer and told him I wanted to make the switch. And um, from that moment on, I mean, my heart was completely into it. And, I, you know, I've played lineman and grown up, and it's not something that's completely new to me. So um, I'd definitely say I was a lineman at heart this whole time, and I love where I'm at right now. That's that's really cool because I know that, that really the, the battle here for you is probably still learning the position, correct? Like how much do you feel like, uh, going into the NFL, that you're very accomplished as a as a lineman. Well, I think my best football is ahead of me, without a doubt. I think uh, I've just started to tap my potential, and uh, moving forward, I think just having the great coaching of uh, Coach Alexander, I think it will help me that much more. Um, I think uh, you know, I think the sky's the limit. I think I can eventually be a starter in the NFL, and uh, I'm looking forward to uh, you know, hopefully tapping that potential a little more, uh, with Coach Alexander. Talking to Reed Fragel, the former Buckeye, now Cincinnati Bengal tackle. Uh, Reed, going into this Bengals organization, this is uh, 
an organization that you heard what I said about Andy Dalton and some of the comments that he's made. It seems like a franchise, honestly, very similar to the Cincinnati Reds a couple of years ago, where it looks like they've got the pieces together for a long, sustained run. You're, you've, you kind of know now, you've gotten used to the fact of being a Bengal. As you've looked at the roster, as you've looked at the future of the franchise, what, what's kind of your, your, your take on, on where this team is, where this franchise is, and what role you could possibly play going forward? Yeah, you know, after being selected, I kind of had to do a little um, background uh, check on, I guess you'd say, or a little history buff on them. But, uh, you know, they had a great draft. I'm very happy with the guys they picked up. And, uh, you know, um, obviously playing the boom and uh, Dane again, that's something that's also uh, pretty exciting. And uh, moving forward, though, I think we got definitely have the pieces and, you know, picking up Harrison, guys like that. And we definitely have the pieces to become a contender for a Super Bowl. Hopefully you can convince Tyler Eifert that you could catch the ball too, that you were pretty good in your <laughs> your prime as well. That's quite a uh, quite a pickup for uh, for the Bengals there with Eifert. Uh, what do you know about him? Well, I've talked to some guys like Stoneburner and uh, Hireman about him. And, um, they told me some things about him. He's a very athletic guy. He's a big guy. So uh, I think having the opportunity to be able to block with a guy, I guess, similar in size to me would be uh, ideal, and uh, I think it would be an awesome duo. Reed, I want to take you back to uh, to last season and what you guys accomplished with so, so much going against you and to go 12-0. and Have you ever been a part of anything like what you experienced last year at Ohio State where everything just I, – I just have – I've seen few teams. like You know, one that's similar is this Blue Jacket team we saw here in town where everything just seemed to align and really play as a team – uh, with what you experienced last year, kind of take us behind the curtain a little bit last year at Ohio State and what you guys were able to accomplish going 12 and 0. Yeah, it's it's something you can't even almost put into words. It's it's something like out of a movie almost. But uh, you know, just going in every game, we felt like we uh, we were uh, we were a pissed off team, I guess you could say, for lack of better words. But um, we felt like we had a chip on our shoulder for we thought we had something taken away from us, and that was our mindset going in every game. And sure enough. No matter what, how close the game was, who we were playing, we fought to the very end. I mean, I think Purdue was a very good example of that. You know, Kenny Guyton coming in, he had ice in his veins, that two-minute drive. And, you know, that's just something we were taught throughout Coach Meyer's uh, season with us is just to never give up, really. And he demanded the most out of every player. And um, I think just knowing that going into every game, we had to lay it all out there. And um, obviously the outcome was very good. Uh, something I'll never forget. Reed, speaking of Urban Meyer, what take us a little bit inside there with that competition, the inner competition of practice and battles like that when he came in. Uh, how much did guys fear of like losing their job or position, or how much of that? How much pressure did you guys feel uh, to perform for him? Well, I think that's that's something that uh, I didn't really realize until I I got out of the program. Is that he's some he's somebody uh, he's very good at is making guys uh, stay on their toes, never get complacent because I think complacency kills. Um, but yeah, like a guy like me, I guess you'd say with the Toe Decker battle last year, that was something that pushed me to become a better player and, uh, it eventually worked. And, um, he just is uh, a guy, a coach that does a great job of doing that with, uh, positions all across the board. And no matter if you're a starter or, um, a third string guy, he gives you hope and he gives you light at the end of the tunnel. It's just a matter of whether or not you want to do that extra, put in that extra effort to get that, uh, that light at the end of the tunnel. And, most of the time, guys are willing to do that for him. Reed, thanks for the time, bud. Good luck down in Cincinnati, and I'm sure we'll be seeing a lot of you down the road. We appreciate you. Always fun to cover you and uh, kick some butt with the Bengals, buddy. Yeah, thanks a lot. Thanks.